notes in the case right here in front of me. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I know exactly how he wanted to handle it. I... Right, I'm just, I'm going to need a little time to study it. Then I can pick right up where Jake left off. No, 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 don't listen. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm going to stay right here, and I'm going to take over Jake's office. Stay welcome. She is not a guest. She is a prisoner. I'll get it. Hello. Hello. Who's this? I know someone's there. Why don't you say something? I have only one thing to say to you. I told you never to call me at my home. You don't tell me anything. I tell you. I'm tired of talk. So far, that's all you've given me. I want Carruthers dead. You give me that, or prepare yourself to suffer the consequences. Don't you threaten me. That's not a threat. It's a promise. You do what I tell you. And you don't give me orders either. Do you understand that? Do you hear me? Who's that? What's the matter? It's nothing. I'll get back to you. What's the matter? I have to go to New York. Why? Someone's come up. What? Why? Who? Come on, tell me. Don't you... Hey, don't you do this to me. Here's a question. Can a man have a private conversation with his own home? Of course he can. I'm certainly not with you sneaking about like a cat. I was deliberately listening to your conversation. Well, come on, I didn't say that. Well, you implied it. I mean, I, I didn't come sneaking in here. I walked in here. OK, I'm sorry. I just didn't hear you. Well, that's because you were on the phone. And you sounded furious. No, I wasn't. You could have fooled me. Well, I mean, if you know so much, then you probably know what I was talking about. I don't know what you were talking about. If I knew what you were talking about, I wouldn't be asking you this. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I shouldn't have to defend myself walking into my own living room. No, you're right. I, well, I feel as if I shouldn't have to defend myself answering my own telephone. Well, nobody's asking you to. <sighs> yeah, you're right. This is ridiculous. I'm sorry. Don't be angry, huh? I am angry. I'm hurt. I'm... I wasn't deliberately listening to your conversation. Oh, will you stop it? Come on. Well, no, well, just tell me what's going on. Tell me who it was or what you're angry about. All is business. Strictly business. It's this food and liquor supplier in New York. I'm having some problems with him. He called you at home? <laughs> you sound like a detective. Yeah, well, I am one. Mm. No, he had to discuss the falling dollar overseas. Apparently, means he's going to increase his prices. Well, quite honestly, I feel like he's just ripping me off. Is that what you're angry about? Yeah, I've got to go to New York straight away. Today? Hey, well, he's not the kind of man you can talk to over the telephone. You really have to meet him face to face. And that's... That's what you're worried about. It's, it's just so... You've been so wound up these past few days, that's all. I know. I can't deny that. So it's the club, right? It's... It's the club. Business hasn't been so good. If you were worried about anything else, uh, outside of the club, you would tell me, wouldn't you? That's your question. Because this is a partnership. We're in this for the good and the bad. Do you think I don't know that? Only the good for you. You're my wife. I will never give you anything to worry about. Oh, don't start with that husband and wife stuff. No, we're equals. Come here. 
If you want me back here tonight, you better let me go now. No, 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 don't worry. We have a very strong case. Okay. All right, hang in there. Goodbye. We? Oh, what's wrong? Everything. Are you okay? Uh, you look like you've just seen a I ghost. I was walking by the door. I thought I heard Jake. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Bob. I mean, I had a dream about him last night. I'm dreaming about him every night. I keep thinking he's going to walk through that door and come home and surprise me. I'm sorry. I've come down to his office and I hear a voice in here. I thought it was Jake. I mean, what, this is his office. What are you doing in here? Oh, Bobby, maybe I made a mistake, but I, I thought you said it was okay for me to use his office. Well, I did, but I didn't expect you to take over. What do you mean? I heard you on the phone with Mr. Kingston. He's one of Jake's oldest clients. I know that's what he said. Well, then why are you trying to steal him? Oh, Bobby, listen, I'm not trying to steal anybody. I, if that's how it sounded, I'm really sorry. I said to you that you could take over Jake's urgent cases. Now the other clients are going to have to go to the firm that Jake recommended. I know, but uh, that's what I want to talk to you about. What is there to talk about? Bobby, some of them don't want to, like Mr. Kingston. Well, Mr. Kingston has been with Jake for a very long time. I know, and Jake has done a hell of a job for him, and that's why he wants to stay with his firm, and about a dozen other people that have called all feel the same way. Why are they still calling? Jake isn't here. I'm here. That's not quite the same thing, is it? No, but listen, some things have changed ever since the Walker case and some of the other little things that I've done for Jake's oh, other whoa, clients. Oh, what do you mean? Uh, Bobby, I... I didn't think it was worth mentioning. You want some coffee? No. Are you telling me that some of Jake's clients want you to represent them? Yeah. Uh, listen, it's not because I'm such a great guy, because I'm the next Perry Mason. It's just that people... People resist change. Tell me about it. Well, I guess I don't have to. I mean, you know better than anybody about people changing for the good or for the bad. We're not talking about me. I know. We're talking about Mr. Kingston. Why he wants to stay here. He likes doing business where it's private. He feels though he's going to get better attention than he would get at a big firm. That's true. Jake gives all of his clients that kind of attention. That is my point. And a lot of the other people feel that same way. That's why they want to stay with this firm. You don't. What do you mean? Look, this practice may be very consistent, but it's not exciting. So, who wants excitement? You do. And you're not going to find it here, Scotty. This is not the hotshot kind of practice that you're used to. Wait, 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 Bobby. You keep jumping to conclusions here. You keep suggesting that I want to take Jake's practice over. I don't. Well, then what is it that you want? You obviously want something. Now, it's not the money because you can see that the bills are all piled up. No, listen, I don't care about money. Since when? Since the satisfaction I got out of helping these people. Come on, Scotty. I've known you for a long time. Your philosophy has always been take care of number one, first, foremost, and always, at everyone else's expense. Was I that bad? Hmm, some people would say so. Well, I probably was. But not anymore. And I want to prove that. I have a different philosophy. I just want to stay here for a little while, and I want to help some of these people that Jake felt were worth helping. And maybe I can prove to this town that I meant what I said. I just, I, I've come back to just make amends. Look, if it were up to me, but... But what? Well, taking care of the urgent cases is one thing, but the continuing cases, you need to have Jake's okay for that. I understand that, Bobby, and I... I just wish it wasn't so difficult to get a hold of him. Well, it is difficult. And if, even if it weren't, I think you are hardly the person that Jake would want to replace him. Wait, no, come on. You keep saying replace. I don't want to replace him. And you're right. Jake is not a big fan of mine. And I'm sure that, you know, he still thinks of me as this guy that wore the, the black hat, you know. But I've hung that up, and I wish he would have hung around to see that. Well, listen, you don't have to know. You just, you just have to think about it, okay? I, I don't want to press you. Okay, I will. 
And you're not. And I appreciate that. Okay. As long as you understand that, then just, just take some time. I will. And I, I just want to say one thing that just might help. In spite of how Jake feels about me, I think he would like to know that his clients are at least getting legal advice. I didn't think you were ever were going to show up. Hey, Alan. Now I know what my patients feel like when they have to wait for me. <laughs> what are you doing here this early? Not that I mind. It's a wonderful way to start the morning. It's nice. Did you look in your outbasket? Excuse me? There's a present for you in your outbasket. Champagne? That's just me saying I'm sorry about Monica's behavior last night. I'll bet she's not sorry. Oh, you can bet on that. <laughs> anyway, that wasn't her idea. It was mine. Well, I'm sorry if she got the wrong idea about us. Did she? Well, what was the poor woman to think? We were sitting there at Duke's at a nice, cozy table for two, champagne chilling. Well, we were celebrating your brilliance, weren't we? I mean, it isn't every day you meet someone as bright and beautiful as you are that can turn $12 million into $24 million. <laughs> well, your wife had no way of knowing that. She wouldn't have believed it anyway. <laughs> she was protecting her interests. It's called territorial imperative. It's called Monica making a scene. <laughs> well, I can hardly blame her. She was afraid. Of what? Losing you. I mean, any woman would have to be a fool if they weren't afraid of losing a man like you. That's about the nicest thing that any woman's ever said to me in my life. Well, you're about the nicest... Oh, oh. What is it? Oh. What? My neck. I must have slept in a draft last night. You're very lucky. You are looking at the number one neck specialist in the United States. Come over here. Oh, all right. Help you with your coat. Thank you. Just relax. Tell me. Does that hurt? Oh, not when you're doing that. What about... Oh. What about there? Oh, that's tight. Oh, that's your trapezius. See, they run all the way along there. Uh-huh. And then they go down the sides of your back mm. like that and then right back up again to your shoulders. Mm. Can't thank you enough. Well, I should be thanking you. You have a wonderful touch. You have a wonderful financial touch. Mm. But you take away pain. You kept me out of prison. <laughs> Oh, it's nice when two people can help each other. I'd love to go on helping you. Oh, I'd be a great patient. But I'd like to do something more for you, too. I'd be a great client. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about becoming, um... Well, asking you to become my permanent financial advisor. You mean we could, uh... barter our services to each other? Well, I've never really thought about it that way, but, uh, why not? Maybe, uh, we could discuss it soon. Maybe some night after I finish at the hospital. Some night very soon. And this time, let's make it someplace a little more private than Duke's. You know, if your wife thought we were seeing each other, she'd certainly get the wrong idea. Excuse me, did I hear you say that, uh, my husband is not in? Well, that's what I've been told. Ah, well, he probably told me. Could you uh, check that schedule? It's so hard with both our schedules. Yeah, he's out for the morning. Uh-huh. Uh, I've forgotten this, too. What was the emergency number he left? Ah, uh, he is at a Cheryl Stansbury's office at... I know. I know where the woman's office is. Would you want me to call him for you? No, thank you, but I would like to have you uh, tell him when he gets back I want to see him. Stat. 